functions of a government we both serve with pride have failed us. They have lied, withheld secrets, acted in their own selfish interests at the expense of their citizens. I don't believe anyone who tells you this all began at Roswell in 47. I'm convinced now that whatever I've glimpsed or encountered and spent my life tracking has been with us since humankind came down out of the trees. It is not something out there in the president's words. They may well have once been our neighbors from some distant star, but I believe they were here before us. I believe that were we able to look deeply at the whole of human history, we would see that they have always been here. I believe they have observed, helped, haunted, tormented and teased us since the beginning of time for reasons entirely their own. I believe that they are a multitude, and that their true nature is singular and energetic, not physical, evolved in some way light years beyond our ability to understand, and as a consequence, our limited, linear sense of time means nothing. A few of us were chosen for some strange purpose. I believe their presence fills more than the skies or these woods. They lie at the root cause of every extra normal or paranormal experience our species has recorded. Religious, spiritual, scientific, ghostly, inspirational, angelic, and demonic. From the burning bush to Fatima and Lourdes, to vampires and sky people, Monsters and abductions in the night, and Roswell and Homestead, and all those strange lights that perhaps seen from millennia by so many of us in so many skies. I believe all these phenomena that our puffed up egos and busy ant minds persist in trying to label, categorize, penetrate, and comprehend all spring from this same uncanny source. This is the mother of all. set our eyes on its ultimate nature, we would find it as foreign, incomprehensible, and indifferent to us as ours would be to bacteria microbes swimming in a drop of water. These final truths you must never forget. We are utterly incapable of knowing their true intent, and their true intent may not be to wish us well. It may be that they're here to guide or even aid our evolution. It's equally possible. We may matter no more to them than those random protozoa in our tap water do to us. In other words, by our meager moral definitions, they may be both good and evil. And those precious distinctions of ours mean nothing to them. There may be even good and evil side of play here. to add, I hope I'm wrong, but this work being chosen has deranged me. That quote there uh, from that video clip is the uh, last letter written from the original Master of the Tower at Listening Post Alpha, Douglas Milford, to uh, Major Briggs, um, just basically about what what he thinks about his, his major conclusions um, and his research over, I guess it was a span of about 40 or 50 years. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that was a strange, I don't know, StreamYard hiccup. I could hear it. I tried unmuting. I don't know. Uh, okay. Maybe it wasn't meant to be, but also the copyright <laughs> gods must be at work, but it uh, doesn't matter. I'll splice yeah. it in later. All of those uh, that are watching could read the quote. I think that's the most important thing were the words. Um, yeah, so welcome. This is a listening post-alpha liminal stream. I am here with the venerable agent, one one one, uh, Mr. Bob Ra Nana. Good to have you again, sir. 
it's a joy to be here with you today, Keith. Yeah, Agent 333. And, yeah, Agent 333, proud of the uh, Coronzon variety, right? Um, yeah, we were talking earlier that uh, just in my kind of space and environment, uh, this is all but too on the noggin, I think, for me as of late in my own sort of move zone. And, you know, we'll get to the Kenneth Grant and John mm -hmm. Keel yeah. kind of correlations and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I'm really excited to talk to you again. Sorry for those of you that are watching. Uh, I don't know what was up with the audio with that, but... We shall try it again another time. Anyway, Mr. Bob Ra, you are going to be leading us as the, uh, you know, I would say the figurehead of this Listening Post Alpha chapter or our kind of convex idea of it, right? Right. Um, and I think if those of you who aren't familiar with Listening Post Alpha or, you know, our kind of generation of it, uh, if you could give uh, just a quick description uh, just a background. Well, um, I'm going to go back, I guess, to uh, what spurred all this. Um, and January 1st, 2020, I had this experience that lasted about 10 days that I referred to as the ear apparent um, in totem. But it uh, started with a um, uh, an experience I had where I was watching Firewalk with me, uh, which is the Twin Peaks film. It's a prequel to what you see on the season one and two. Uh, we were watching a scene where there's a, um, a, a dead prostitute named Teresa Banks on um, displayed out and uh, they're doing an autopsy and they pull a uh, letter T from her fingernail. Now it's uh, believed that killer Bob leaves letters of his name in each of his victims uh his full name being robert so you've got uh like an like a i think a b and r a t and an o that they cover in the in the series but teresa's the t and um when i was watching it I, uh they pulled that letter from her nail and i was sitting in front of a pile of cut up pieces of paper that I call the haunted and accursed pile. And I kind of made like a connection, you know, instantly between the piece of paper being pulled from her body and pulling a piece of paper from the pile. And I just grabbed a random piece out and it said, see myself and see myself equaled 141 by the ALW cipher, which also equaled Teresa Banks, the corpse and all this other stuff. And I recently just looked into the etymology of autopsy and autopsy also means like uh, to see oneself mm -hmm. or to, you know, uh, have have something revealed or to see for oneself. And um, it was a it was used uh, to describe initiation actually in ancient Greece, which I thought was interesting. I just found that out like the other day. So yeah, I had, the spy I had, part, right? Yeah, none of this, none of this, by the way, I knew. I had just started working with the cipher. I had just started really getting into Twin Peaks and David Lynch's work real heavy. And then it went on from there. Um, so this sort of like incursion of, Twin Peaks characters into my reality, coupled with this sort of like initiatic experience that uh, couples up with um, certain Masonic degrees and uh, the history of esotericism in total, which is pretty amazing. And I'm, it's, you know, it was like I got a, uh, a slow release pill, you know, <laughs> and you got it's, the drip. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. just slowly been revealing itself to me ever since. And one of the things that I was commanded to do in that experience was to keep a journal. And so mm -hmm. listening post alpha journal is that journal. And lucky for me, I've had some friends to help along the way. I met some new people, you know, to help out along the way. Keats being one of them. Yeah. And uh, the journals are incredible. The, you, the first one is how we met uh, going over it and, you know, we've seen like you've you've thrusted me into this. You know, I've always been a Twin Peaks fan and I've always like had the consciousness of like deeping, deeping, deepening uh, into like different tethers and I ideologies and stuff but in the background of, you know, of cinema and film. But there's a part of like the David Lynch school of, 
you know, not looking for answers, but making your own sort of uh, things that revealed to me in a lot of his films. But with this one, and I think with the advent of Mark Frost, especially, because I think he's a big instrumental uh, I mean, he is a, an incredible instrumental aspect to it, but especially for these kind of unmistakable and unshakable connections to this motherfucker reads Kenneth Grant. You know what I mean? Or like, mm. <laughs> like yeah. this guy, this guy is he's on to something and he, he's feeding some breadcrumbs. And I love their that confluence between them where I feel feel like Mark Frost is definitely leaving some some lineages and stuff whereas like lynch really works in that abstract kind of pantheon of you know consciousness and and all of that yeah. fun stuff that i like to to exist in a bit more but uh yeah it's great the confluence of both of them and i think the advent of it coming into my life especially twin peaks at certain chapters in my life that were always very uh i mean all chapters of my life were you know, rollicking and heavy, but uh, yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> these always come up in very, uh, you know, with the inner speak, like the inner choir kind of yelling at you loud about, you know, pay attention to this. You didn't catch this before, you yeah. know, really dig deep into it. And so with folks like you and Groucho and Stevie, Sam and Stasha, like, and of course, Leah, you know, it's been incredible to work within the confluence of, uh, you know, the spirit box and like really dipping into the multitudes of, you know, paranormality. Right. And mm -hmm. also finding these tethers that I had hitherto not seen, uh, through twin peaks and that ideology, it's like become such an archetypal compendium and in, of its like itself. And it just keeps breeding, you know? Yeah. And I keep, you know, I learn, I'm learning things constantly. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so much stuff that I wouldn't have learned about esotericism, history, uh, music, if it weren't for that single experience during that David Lynch movie, you know? Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, it keeps coming back to that. And the, the thing with the, uh, the spirit box is, you know, I had always I had had some experience, some EVP experiences with doing like noise music and stuff like mm -hmm. where, you know, I had such strange things come out of certain uh, certain constellations of instruments and pedals and stuff, you know, that had in feedback loops that I mean, I had scared myself out of my basement a couple of times, you know, in the past. Yeah. And, when I found when I heard about the spirit box, I thought, well, that would be a really interesting way uh, to try to access that kind of current. Um, and also, you know, I like the idea. I didn't like the idea so much that, you know, you were going to just like turn it on and you were going to talk to like a, a, a like a ghost, like in the a disembodied space. consciousness. Yeah, like yeah. Somebody yeah. had had like. Um, yeah, like the haunting or something like that, you know, and you'll see it used that way. Um, on TV sometimes. And I think those people are kind of full of it, you know, mm -hmm. um, like what we do is we just, we let it in, you know, and we interpret what we hear and uh, then we weigh it by the cipher. You know, we've, uh, we've all had amazing results. Sometimes it's confusing and other times it's really, it really hits on the right on the nose of what you're, you're wanting to uh, tune into, you know, and expand yeah. your knowledge and in and, and ways that, you know, you couldn't have in possibly have anticipated, you know, and so yeah. it's a, an amazing technique. That's amazing way to blend those things together. Um, it's a little, it's not for everybody. It's information overload, you know, it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, it can be kind of heavy, but um, I, you can really, the, the journals, you can, anybody can, that's into esotericism, David Lynch, uh, or any of this stuff can find something in those journals, you know, that, that they will be like, wow, it's really interesting. Um, yeah. There's also like a humor and a, like, uh, I don't know. There's just such an aesthetic quality with like uh, a kind of uh, lost futurism, right? There's like so many hauntological aspects, especially with the yeah, radio absolutely. and these existing yeah. kind of forming atoms in the air that are still permeating. It's like, what's a better synonym you know for that than ghost right or <laughs> yeah know? absolutely and, it's, yeah and know. i mean yeah the idea of the ghost that definitely makes sense um 
but you know what, what we're dealing with. And I think the reason that I, uh, I put all this stuff in the, um, the ultra terrestrial, the super spectrum and the ultra terrestrial framework is because um, it considers these beings as beings of pure energy. You know, these are, and these are beings that can do amazing things. They also know us, they mimic us. Um, and they have been here since before, or, you know, kill and Valley and other people say, and I kind of believe that they have been here since before we were here, but also that how we interact with them um, and how we interact with our environment affects how they manifest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, okay. it's, you know, a lot of times, like if I, if you're tuning in to hear, uh, to, to gather information on a certain topic, like if, or if you're trying to tune into a certain spirit, um, we get, you know, feedback that from, from that spirit and, or, you know, uh, we get like the fingerprints of that spirit. Uh, and so the, there's something about that. That's, um, that's based in time. That's very important, you know, like, and if, if this entity is wanting to show us something and wanting to speak to us, then it has to have already pre-programmed, these messages to us, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's like a, they, seeing you know, the light of like, a star. You have to have already yeah. manipulated so many things for us to get these messages. But, and mm -hmm. so it's almost absurd, you know, to, uh, mm -hmm. to think that this could work at, to could work, you know, but we see over and over again that it does. I mean, right here is proof. The first journal is proof. And, um, you know, we're not cooking up any of this stuff. This is all just like, raw data that we are reporting, you know, um, this is listing post alpha journal year two. And, um, it's not just transmissions in these journals. It's also, um, you know, we're doing a lot of esoteric research based off of the information that we get. And so we kind of cover that in the intro introductory pages. Um, and also there's a lot of great art by Groucho and Leah and, Sometimes mm -hmm. by myself, I wouldn't call it great, but, you know, little sketches and stuff. But yeah, and, and um, you know, there's all kinds of interesting things that happen, like with with the data, like um, they kind of uh, almost like cross pollinate between um, sessions and you'll get like correspondences from like you'll get a line and maybe it seems like nonsense, but then you weigh it next to a line from another session and it like finishes a sentence or something, you know what I mean? So it's stuff like that. So there's all kinds of interesting stuff going on and it's very, yeah, I think very beautiful it, too, you know, I think though the vernacular too, and like how it uh, relates to, um, I think like, you know, Gordon Cole has always been kind of my way in and he's using these like really outdated earbuds. And it seems like he's always spitting, uh, random lyrics from songs, or you know what I mean? He sounds like a spirit box a lot. Yeah, quote. he kind of does. Yes. Yeah. And also, and, we do those yeah. all caps with the the yeah. correspondences, you know? So it looks yes, like, yeah. like you're yelling it out, you know? So yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. Use your smile as an umbrella or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But like, uh, you know, and I, it just it reminds me of just how. Um, yeah, there's a pres the prescience to it because of these kind of outmoded, kind of aesthetically driven ideas of uh, almost like Cold War era technology. And I realize like that's almost kind of the the paradigm of which I find like almost the most um, kind of resolute vernacular to speak of things of you know like the paranormal, like to speak in radio wave terminology or to speak and uh you know uh signal flow terminology yeah. and like things from you know even the 70s and the 80s of, of of like how just what the maxim was for understanding you know this information we're, we're pulling from the atmosphere and there's something timeless about it now because it seems like we're going in reverse and kind of heading back to that where we're needing to distill the vernacular we're, we're, you know, I'm going back to, you know, I've always been there, but like using cassette tapes as limitation because now all of our um, options are unlimited. 
It's yeah. like we need to dial it back down and scale it back, mm-hmm. you know. And there's something, yeah, there's just something within the Twin Peaks kind of oeuvre and 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 like technology and this retro futurism in a way of of like this dead language of when things just kind of plateaued and it's it's like the the mark of when technology and magic like hit yeah you know what yeah. i mean and that's what yeah. listening to alpha is kind of built around is um you know it's it's very like the stuff that they're using in the television show is actually would be pretty primitive compared to what right. they, they some some group yeah. like that would be using now you know and so when what mm-hmm. we do actually is make it even more primitive you know yeah uh, and uh but at the same time it's uh it's clandestine and it's now mm-hmm. a trans-dimensional group so like we're we're talking to other agents or you know what people might call like the secret chiefs or something like that you know there's yeah. been, there's been a a trans-dimensional merger between the worlds, uh, between the real and the fictive, between mm-hmm. our world and Twin Peaks, and between um, the lodges, the the White Lodge, the Black Lodge, right? And, the pillars, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think that's what I mean too, and why I bring that up is like this kind of temporal trans-dimensional, like delocation, in a sense where. It's like this junkyard of like fevered dreams of forgotten technologies that are still useful, you know? Yeah. And absolutely. we're still pulling from because it's it's like the uh you know, it's it's an it's a preternatural uh like MacGyvering of mm-hmm. sources of somewhat even you know, you could break it down into twin peaks even like an economical senses and class senses and these you know small town washington and what like a you know american pie and americana and like the nuclear family i mean the nuclear shit's kind of huge within yeah Yeah, Um, and within david lynch uh but and that being almost in this like weird afterlife of after that first you know atomic bomb testing like now mm-hmm. we're kind of this like uh desolation culture where like we can't catch up with technology and so at the same time it's like we got to slow our shit down you know <laughs> like, yeah 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 and yeah to you have to slow down and listen you know right or go in reverse right um, or yeah. yeah yeah find other ways yeah, yeah. you're going in reverse yeah. technologically and mm-hmm. you're slowing down your listening you know, and um, there's also this thing, uh, all the all that technology that you're speaking of would be like, you know, that's how um, the the way that these these beings have manifested um, since, say, 47 um, have been um, through through some of these. It, it, it's been basically a uh, either kind of like a manifestation of technology that's yet to be birth you know Mm -hmm. right or uh, people seeing actual technology that's um secret you know Um, sure we don't have like the vernacular just kind of the like equitable lingo to distill it like we can other things you know and so the thing with kill in the super spectrum was like they, they we get colors we get uh, sounds we get certain symptoms of like radiation radiation mm-hmm. poisoning um you have your emf meters you know uh, so uh, their electromagnetic frequency is important um etc cetera, etc cetera. there there are all these kind of uh ways to detect and ways to not necessarily measure well i guess measuring would be part of it but yeah a way to uh um Kind on of, some axes yeah comp- like, yeah comprehend yeah. these beings or you know a way to study them maybe based on like the colors the sounds mm-hmm. the, you know yeah and all that kind of stuff so um he, you know the smells um and, and stuff like that that was another big thing for keel was the smells and um so you know he he didn't he didn't have any any evidence you know in his years and years of study to to say that you know, these people, these are like people coming from other planets, you know, and in a lot of ways, it wouldn't even make any sense. You know, if if we at LPA were talking to people at other from other planets, 
then we would probably wouldn't be able to understand them and they wouldn't be able to understand us, mm-hmm. you know, unless they had been here a really long time and, and shaped the way that we speak now, you know, and that's my thing with the ALW cipher and the Gematria is, you know, I didn't really take Gematria totally seriously until I started working it in this way. And the reason that I'm so into this cipher specifically is because I feel like it's been, it's been revealed to us by certain Praetor human intelligences in order to make it easier for them to like convey a script to us. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Well, and so, there's so much Gematria too, or Gematria, excuse my American. Gematria. Gematria. Um, <laughs> There's so much of it in Twin Peaks itself, too. And it's like, uh, I think even Mark Frost talks about that, right? Doesn't he mention? I, I didn't read The Secret Does History. he talk about Jamatri? I don't know. I don't know. He does say, I mean, no. um, there's some stuff with Dougie Milford where he talks about um, how he yeah. studied numbers, pattern numbers, and stuff like that. And there's definitely, like, the big printout sheet that Major Briggs brings to yeah. – um, Dale Cooper, you know, when they have the synchroni- synchronicity of the owls are not what they seem, he, it's kind of like a alphanumeric script. And in mm-hmm. the middle of it, it says the owls are not what they seem. So it's like they're using some sort of cipher to try to decode certain like vibratory messages or whatever that, the, you know, that they're picking up there. At, right, at, right. At, yeah. Listening Post Alpha and Twin Peaks. Yeah. Yeah. And listening post alpha too, if, uh, yeah, you didn't mention it because it was, uh, wasn't that the – it was the post they made uh, – what was the war? Was the Cold War? Or it was during the Cold War, war. Yeah, yeah. 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 During the – yeah, 19 – I think they – 1983, uh, Philip Jeffries and yeah. uh, Gordon Cole oversaw the uh, the building of it. And, um, yeah, Dougie Milford uh, took yeah. over as the master of the tower for uh, – until ma- he, he trained Major Briggs. Yeah, and like, uh, you know, not to jump ahead, but, you know, all this alliteration in a way of we're talking about, you know, even when I was mentioning this tethered kind of angular but academic route that Mark Frost is going, where you can kind of, if you dig deep, you see connectivity and you're like, oh, well, this, you know, some of these ideas seem very kind of resolute to be from kenneth grant or whatever and then whereas david lynch is coming from that opposite pillar right the more of the absurd not going to tell you not leaving breadcrumbs doesn't care what you think of it you know what i mean and i often think you You know i think think you definitely like in season three at least he picks up on all the esotericism and stuff oh yeah and he makes fun of it laying down in the books you know yeah yeah i think yeah he makes fun of it too and uh and returns and we'll get to returns because like there's uh there's a lot of what we were talking about like this kind of even what you were saying with the post fix of speed you know the looking within and like that entire season is that and it almost in a you know distemporal way of Seen like yourself, the autopsy, yeah, yeah 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 of the tv show itself yes, and like absolutely. will they exist when the screen goes black kind of a thing yeah. So, but what I'm trying to get at are, are these, like, you know, the pillars, right? And I, I'm sure it's been talked to death about, you know, yeah, the Kabbalistic cool. kind of, you know, you know, and the the polarities, right? White yeah. lodge, black lodge, and even I'm I'm saying from the micro to the macro, just like Mark Frost as a creator, David Lynch as a creator, almost were you know these opposing pillars too yeah, that kind yeah. of came together in that middle pillar right the, yeah absolutely yeah mercy and severity yeah but, exactly yeah. mercy and severity yeah 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 yep. who's who <laughs> yeah and twin peaks would be like the actual show would be right there in the middle you know um, mm-hmm. that's that's the thing God. About, yeah, it's yeah the coffee and the cherry pie you know the mm-hmm. like lynch says you know that there's like this thing about bitterness and sweetness you know and you have to yeah bring yeah they bring them together and, and yeah i mean and that's just been such my there's almost been like an agnostic insanity about you know these um emergent contrarianisms 
like in within me and then kind of i just see it everywhere now and it is maddening to a point mm. yeah <laughs> you know but twin peaks is very on the sleeve about about these things and about that middleness about that you know how do i put it like the empathy with the dark in a way you know yeah yeah absolutely yeah. well yeah i, keep, I love it like, i'm even noticing that i say you know as like a dis- <laughs> uh, vocal dislocation it's like that's a ridiculous question yeah, well, to they're, ask but <laughs> yeah they're um you know yeah i mean like all no. the all the characters are tragic in a way you know right and all yeah. of them have done things that are questionable in some sense you know even the log lady has has some some stuff you know and so it's nobody's pure nobody's really evil even killer bob has a has a backstory you know killer bob might have been uh this this guy delaware bob who was just out looking for gold and they ate in the gold rush and uh got swept up in the owl cave or whatever you know no one no one there gets out alive <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah there's something yeah, yeah purgatorial too yeah. about as, Twin Peaks and like mike you know um and and firewalk with me um you know mike is is very much trying to hold a balance you know and there's something about that ring mm-hmm. and getting it on laura's finger that's very important and it's you know mike shows up at, at the very end uh and you know he, he tosses that ring in and she picks it up and puts it on you know and um that's like a the the alchemical marriage that happens there is is extremely important and it's extremely important to mike that she die you know right with that finger or with that with that ring on her finger and it's not it's not that he's evil it's not yeah i mean it's that there's a balance that that has to be struck there red to white to black yeah yes (laughs) yeah and what and there's but there's still something off you know um Mm -hmm. and he had he's hanging out in the lodges uh, doing sorcery, trying to, um, trying to still trying to like strike that balance, you know, and um, that's, you know, when he tries to send Dale back a- into Mr. C and something happens. And well, what happens is the arms doppelganger, you know, the arm is also there try- w- with Mike trying to perform this, this, uh, this, this operation, this magical operation from the lodges. And when Cooper tries to enter Mr. C, the uh, doppelganger of the arm intervenes, you know? So, and then you have this whole, then there's a huge rift in Twin Peaks. And that's, you see all this terrible stuff starts bubbling up in Twin Peaks. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, I think what Lynch is probably trying to say there is that, the problem really is that is the desire to bring back Laura in the first place, you know, the, the desire to bring back Twin Peaks in the first place, you know, um, when something's dead, you should let it rest, you know, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, celebrate like, it, but yeah. 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 You can celebrate it and mm-hmm. uh, give offerings to it and love it for what it was, but to bring it back is to bring like to bring back Laura is to bring back all that suffering. You know, there's so, yeah, there's something. So, I mean, her being, you know, wrapped in plastic on a, you know, just a, a shitty Lake beach. There's something so Malkuth about it all. And Absolutely. like them existing it within that, like just that visual. Oh, but isn't that horrible? Isn't that, it's like all they can think about is her tragic death and, you know, yes. stuff comes out later, and it, but it's like they're always existing in this very, uh, like, present sense of uh, somatic causality. And mm-hmm. that's what traps them, you know. In and that's what happens with the audience cycle. as well. They, Ex- they start exactly. obsessing yeah. over so who cool. was it. Well, so wait, who killed the yeah. Laura? Well, it was a MacGuffin in the show, you know. It yeah. was like, yeah. this is, we're using Laura as a way to get at all these other issues that people have in in society you know we're trying to make a deep show and all Mm -hmm. this yeah yeah so it's like yeah the uh, so the people basically like people's lust of result ate up Mm -hmm. the show you know yes yeah and 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 i think the return is yeah yeah, the return gives you like a a master lesson and basically and what happens with the lust of result and Mm -hmm. you know when 
like when Dale comes back through as Dougie uh, Jones, he is basically like wiped clean. He's like a clean slate, you know, and uh, he's like the fool, you know, in the fool mm-hmm. card, when you reach highest initiation on the tree. It's like, uh, Leah was talking about this with me the other day. She was th- saying, you know, it's like we forget so much. Like I was t- typing notes and stuff. And, you know, I'm always I'm always typing up quotes and gathering quotes and from this book and that book. And she's like, yeah, you learn so much. But then, like, eventually you're going to forget it. You know, you fall and you fall back down the tree and you're just like, you know, like a blank slate again. You know, and that's there's there's almost like there's a there's a beauty in that, you know, and when he comes back back online as just originally as Dougie, he's everywhere he goes, it's gold, literally, you know, Mm -hmm. he, he, you know, he goes to the, he goes to Vegas and he makes like a million dollars. He pays off all his debts. He makes his wife happy. He makes his kid happy. He, there's a homeless lady in there in the casino. He like basically, turns her life around, makes her a rich lady in moments, you know, and all this. So it's like, yeah, it's there. But then once he comes back online as Dale Cooper and then all the, all the, you know, everything, all the suffering turns back up to 10, you know, the baggage floats to the top for sure. That's funny too. I've been like in this um, kind of constant understanding of my own like ability, this kind of almost, inherent or innate ability to um forget epiphany Mm. like like epiphanies will happen yeah or the same epiphany will happen under different like variables or circumstances all the time and i'm like ah i know this why didn't i remember this and it's almost (laughs) like you know know. dougie (laughs) coming in and going yeah Yeah. stop well if try it this way it's like ah you idiot you know you keep doing it like this but yeah, that's that's uh yeah, that's really revealing. There is something freeing about uh yeah, just the fool. And absolutely, you know. But yeah. So I know you had um I think I figured out the issue with the sound. So okay. don't let that dissuade you uh-huh. from anything else Even so uh you could go ahead and play that that other that one clip that's really important and um it, it has I think it also has like the uh the captions at the bottom or whatever uh is that that's the, first, the, uh, the missing pieces one? number seven gotcha yeah. yeah will do open for you oh and let me introduce this clip real quick this is yeah, like please you know, do. late night tv or something like <laughs> but, yeah. read it yeah we um, are the radio show in the uh aeon yeah know. man right on uh the link between the ultra terrestrial super spectrum something kenneth grant calls the ophidian current and the entities of the television show Twin Peaks are uh, the. Wait, let me start over. <laughs> We're doing a brief overview of an exciting topic today. Uh, the link between the ultra terrestrial super spectrum, something Kenneth Grant calls the Ophidian current, and the entities of the television show Twin Peaks. Um, before we get into any of the specifics, I would just like to play a short clip from Lynch and Frost's Twin Peaks, The Missing Pieces, which is a companion film to Fire Walk With Me, made from scenes that did not make the original cut. I feel like this scene really encompasses the overarching theory I'm trying to put across, which is that the entities of the lodges in Twin Peaks, like Killer Bob, the Arm, and the Jumping Man, are ultra-terrestrial in nature, meaning they are entities of pure energy that are evoked through and manifest out of something called the Ophidian Current.
Love that clip. And that was originally from uh, the scene with where Philip Jeffries busts into the FBI headquarters and makes his his famous uh, speech to Gordon Cole about Judy and how we all live in a dream. Yeah. And, um, so why do I think that's really important? Well, first of all, I think it, it shows that um, this film is really working from that ultra terrestrial framework. Um, and I guess before we go forward, I'll just go ahead and kind of give some basic definitions of that word ultra terrestrial because um, it's a word that gets thrown around a lot now. It's kind of like a hip term, but I don't think many people are really engaging with what it is and what it means and where it comes from. The actual oldest um, instance of anybody using that term that I found was in a uh, Irish newspaper from like the 1800s. And it was actually just used to me like ultra. It was a, uh, they were talking about, meteors some meteorites and they were calling them ultra terrestrial objects so what they meant basically was extra what we would think of as an extraterrestrial object or a well, object of like life outside of <laughs> yeah. yeah and that too yeah yeah, yeah. the ultra yeah instead yeah instead of extra, there is like an added yeah dimension of of meaning of the word ultra that it's like more than or uh, yeah, like big or yeah, it, it yeah. Could, but as a meteor, um, like world ending. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like that Uber. And it's a, yeah, it's also it's also in a way yeah, a meteor is also kind of like an earthen 
sort of a, a rock, you know, in a way, you yeah. know, something, something that, that we it's might the add, Jason you know. X of earths. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that the one where he goes into space? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think his name is is, is Uber Jason, actually. (laughs) But yeah, so uh, in short, ultra terrestrials uh, as a as a as a group of beings is uh, are beings of pure energy, and this was coined in Kill's 1971 book, Our Haunted planet in a chapter called mimics of man which is very twin peaksy and you know uh and um i want to read this quote from let's see what is this from? this is from the mothman prophecies and i think this gets it like this is the most precise quote that he's got on this stuff um he says my long and very expensive ex- excursions into the borderland where the real and the unreal merge have failed to produce any evidence of any kind to support the idea that we are entertaining shy strangers from some other galaxy. Rather, I have come to realize that we have been observing complex forces, which have always been an essential part of our immediate environment. Complex forces, which have always been an essential part of our immediate environment. So these are things that would be you could measure on a scale or on on a spectrum, you know, Um, instead of thinking in terms of extraterrestrials, I have adopted the concept of ultra terrestrials, beings and forces which coexist with us, but are on another time frame. That is, they operate outside the limits of our space time continuum, yet have the ability to cross over into our reality. This other world is not a place, however, as Mars and Andromeda are places, but it is a state of energy. Um, And then he goes on uh, to talk about the ultra terrestrial. He wrote a whole book about the ultra terrestrial super spectrum called the Eighth Tower. And um, he defines the best definition for the super spectrum that he gives because he tries to keep it kind of abstract. You know, he has some diagrams some scales you know that he's trying to to work with and i think he would have done better to maybe go back into uh into occultism and to look at you know uh the kundalini correspondences and uh the tree of life and and all that but he for for whatever reason he seems to have it out for occultists and but uh the ultra terrestrial super spectrum, he says it's a a hypothetical spectrum of energies that are known to exist, but that cannot be accurately measured with present day instruments. Um, It is a shadowy world of energies that produce well-observed effects, particularly on biological organisms. So we can uh, see the effects of these energies and we can see them manifesting through the energies uh, that we know, right? But ultimately we cannot get to a, a, a to the actual source of, <laughs> you know what I mean? Of what's making these measurements. Um, it's like a, the fathomability yeah. paradox. Yeah, this super yeah. spectrum is the source of all paranormal manifestations from extrasensory perception to flying saucers, little green men, and tall, hairy monsters. Uh, it is hard to pin down scientifically because it is extra dimensional, meaning that it exists outside of our own space time continuum, yet influences everything within our reality. And so you you see this in this video that in this clip we just played um, that s- certain people can see what's going on mm. um, and there's certain ways to experience and we experience these these phenomenon and these entities maybe as little green men as big hairy monsters as you know you name it right uh fairies uh ghosts demons angels um and we it even seems like we have the ability to create them um tulpas egregores etc you know um and And also I got to say, like, Killer Bob in that scene is always, you know, the like the fury of my own momentum. Like, that is the human condition. That seems like that, you know, it's the vector of the human experience is that, 
you know, everything is I, is subjectivity. Like you've met me, you know, at my most focused of self. And it's like, that is the, you know, the egregore for the human experience, especially against these things that we can't understand or fathom doesn't matter to them. You know, focus will, you know, burn all forests sort of a thing, you know? Yeah. And there's, um, yeah, there's something to be said about that. The next line is fail a victim, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, yeah, that's, um, yeah. Uh, you know, you start out with these beings, they, they travel through electricity and they make use of elect- electrical instruments and, and things that we access through electricity um, in order to travel and, and speak and, and whatnot. So, yeah, the um, and it just so happens that since we turn the light on in that sense, um, we might have signed our own death warrant on this planet. You know what I'm saying? So sure. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like and death, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, you know, with global warming and whatnot, you know, uh, and climate change. Uh, but yeah, so with uh, yeah, so Twin Peaks has a diverse population of these entities. You know, um, and in in this video, you see the woodsman, you see uh, the arm, you see Killer Bob. You see um, the jumping man who is the little guy with the the white mask on. And uh, I heard somewhere that David Lynch had actually told that guy, like, look, you're a talisman. This is what you do. This is what you wear. You're a talisman. You're a living talisman. So David Lynch is definitely doing some magic there. And also the the young boy and the grandmother, that's a self-reference. That's his son. And that's a self-reference to his first film, The Grandmother. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, and there's and so there's hit one of his own doppelgangers there, you know. And it, no, I love it. Dresses yeah. him, hair slicked as him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And no. um, then you also have uh, you know like talking logs and uh, you know elemental like Killer Bob's an elm uh, f- said to be a fire elemental. Uh, yeah, you have giants, you have enchanted owls, you have UFOs, angels. Yeah. Oh, just but in that spectrum where it really is like you know the dogs playing poker like <laughs> that painting that you see in your stepdad's you know basement uh where he hangs out with the boys and drinks yeah. 40s all night didn't realize that that's actually what the universe is right <laughs> and it's the dogs sort of playing poker. it's sort of scary you know it's like yeah, yeah the, you know um in that scene <laughs> Um, you got you've got Philip Jeffries on the other side saying, mm-hmm. you know, like they were above a convenience store, you know, and, they, mm-hmm. and it's like it's so what, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there were some dudes hanging out above a convenience store. But then you see what's on the other side, like what who those dudes were and what the how they were what they were doing, you know, and it's yeah. like, OK, um, so, yeah, that, I that's love it. And like to them, too, uh, like just in that whole discussion, you know, I.D. Wed, that's like the, you know, the marriage of the pillars. It's them discussing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah. In, in, uh, well, and, you know, up and down, that's um, we're talking about the middle. Right. Pillar. And yeah, um, they. Uh, yeah. So if you think about like the Kundalini, mm-hmm. you know, from pure air. And so that's we're talking little wind. We're getting yeah, yeah, yeah. closer to what we're talking about with the Ophidian current, where it's like you're bringing in that pure air and you're making your 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 tearing down boundaries in your body and in uh you know in your metaphysical space, and suddenly you're literally sucking in star ash. Yes, Ab- oh. yeah, that's beautiful. Yes, and yeah. you're making yourself more susceptible to these sort of experiences. You know, right? Yeah. Um, and there's, I was reading Grant right before we came on, um, because you know Grant, he's tricky as fuck, and mm. those that's why people get frustrated with him is because he works with these very like. Uh, yeah, we'll just call them abstract concepts, you know, like he'll throw out a term. Self-referential <laughs> abstract yes, also concepts that. Yeah, yeah, that yes. aren't spelled out in a book titled of well, that Well, he concept. has like, he has <laughs> like a definition else, yeah. of the Ophidian current. And it's right, like, right, right. like he has definitions that some, in some of his books at the end. And they're kind of like, they give you a little bit, but it's not, you know what I mean? Right. And, but he but like he distills the, like the mob zone. 
Yeah. And another he, text, not beyond the mom zone sort of a thing. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You have to read like all yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. The, Which the, I love. It's a it's the micro universe. Yeah, right? yeah. The hyper yeah, sigil. It's, it's amazing. It's 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 amazing yeah. once you, you can and you can just get in there and get into like one little concept and just travel around the trilogies and really it's a you know have a whole experience you know and build really build new i mean he does thinks it is a systematic thing you know it's not just mm -hmm. like a bunch of babble um but yeah it's yeah like, it seems intentional yeah. enough for sure yeah he does veil things you know but but mm -hmm. behind yeah i mean you have to have a certain amount of knowledge you know it's like i've been reading grant since i was you know a senior in high school or something yeah and, I'm just now, 20 years later, starting to really get him, you know, and it, it kind of makes me feel like real dumb. I'm, I'm inching closer. You know, like, I'm inching closer. Yeah. Every yeah. day. Uh, every uh, day. Little, little pieces, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, which is great. And it's. Well, it's funny because, yeah. like, that's the thing that, you know, I've understood about kind of this, uh, this kind of kund Kundalini energy or like the kind of uh, communion with the serpentine, you know, chaotic quality of things it, and it's in his writing too and i feel that with like my writing where you know from a journalistic background you're like i want to make sure this makes sense to everybody it's like why you got to organize some chaos like yeah yeah you know and you gotta you can't silence yourself by over explaining yeah. yeah 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 you you know and yeah exactly and and that's never like i said you know like with the um see myself event when mm -hmm. it happened i thought I've got it. I know what all this is. I know, you know what I mean? And then it was like, then I find out that I don't even, I hadn't even read Mark Frost books. <laughs> yeah, no. even, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like, there's a whole tundra of shit. Yeah. 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 And you know, I, I came out with all this, all this writing right at the beginning during COVID and all the all COVID happened right after that. And I was unemployed and I had all this writing and now I go back and I'm like, I don't know what, like I was just, you know, really trying to do get in. Like, but the, we're the back doors. again to like um, the fool, though. Do you feel silenced by your own now yes. understanding that you know, other it's people like every, were? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like I always feel a little naked doing this kind of yeah. stuff, but I also know that like I, I'm propelled for some reason to do this, and that it's important to get yeah. this stuff out. It's not that I'm like it's all me, it's all mine. I'm the big genius, no, exactly. Like, yeah, no, no. Yeah, these sure. are. These are things that I've noticed in this from this experience that mm -hmm. I want to share. And uh, everything that I tell you, I'm mean, all any bit of information I'm giving you, I'm also giving you like my ignorance, you know. And if you and want, I want I want that yeah. bare brand spanking new, you know, glassy butt cheeked baby in the wind. <laughs> like yeah. I'm I'm starting to realize like once you get into like the vernacular and like you start digging those holes, it's like, yeah, a lot of people have thought these things, things are similar, not the same. Yeah. Similar. And then I feel arrested to lexicons and verbatim and terminology. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? That's and like really over explaining, it's like yeah. shit. I yeah. rather I I wish that it's like just let it let me get it out and go back and go, oh yeah, that is kind of like that. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. that's what we're and that's and that's the whole thing that Kill's saying is like mm -hmm. that's all we're gonna pretty much get at unless there's like this great revelation. You know what I mean? We can only get at what we've learned before and and synthesize that with the new information, you know. And um it's funny because the old information starts becoming new, you know, and, and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, we've definitely seen recently how, you know, I, I, I wanted to write off a lot of old esotericism or, or just like kind of just, you know, stuff that I didn't really get the first time. I just want to be like, well, it's, I don't need it, you know? And if anything, uh, you know, the research that we've done is, you know, keeps leading us back to ancient stuff, you know, and, yeah. and seeing that there is actually my problem was that I didn't see the actual connection between like what was going on with the Golden Dawn. Mm. And what was going on in ancient Egypt? I thought it was bullshit. And, you know, there there's a lot of they got a lot of stuff like fuzzily. You know, it was kind of fuzzy yeah. their understanding of, of some of that stuff. But I don't think there's someone with a more refined or higher degreed merit badge than you about an epiphany you've had. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no, like it's like what, how it comes to you and how you verbalize it. I think that's like, you know, that's that's the wealth there. 
in yeah. that and, and it, yeah it's just gone i mean we can we can be here all day with just a culture and hierarchical understandings yes, of you know whatever it's like you know it is not it, it is the same essentially in the macro right in a, the yeah, 100 yeah. million light year degree yeah. viewpoint mm -hmm. of what we're talking about and i do enjoy that but i hope that everybody reads that on or reads anything understanding that this is the micro coming from a you know a, a personal experience not you know yeah. in a web of you know academic standardization or mm -hmm. wh whatever you know what i mean yeah i yeah. think it it, uh, it nullifies it. and that's what i love about twin peaks though about the lore too cuz yeah uh, it's not i came across it a lot as a twin peaks fan i'm just not really a fan of like things and i think that's <laughs> like i am but that word like like bugs me and maybe that's more telling about me as well a i think i'm the same way i understand what you're saying yeah. you know it's like that's why yeah, i was they, sitting there it watching became, yeah. firewalk with me with mm -hmm. a bunch of projects in front of me right and yeah that's yeah. what that's where the confluence comes from is mm -hmm. the fact that i don't i don't usually i do now but i don't usually focus on films yeah when it's, i was at the r and r cafe and i really enjoyed the guy that uh, he came from Missouri. He's a great artist. I forget his name on Instagram. I'll try to share it later. But uh, really great dude. But we had this whole debate on the last like night of Laura Palmer's life, you know. Oh, okay. And it was like by the book, you know, she died on the twenty fourth, and I was like, therefore, the twenty third was her last, yeah, like cycle or like <laughs> you know day of life you know yeah and yeah it, just, it got into this minutia yeah. because it was about what was written or decided yeah, written by, you know, yeah what's well, canonical yeah, yeah. yeah but for me yeah. that's i think that's great because like that's what i'm trying to push is like a, right right twin peaks as a mythos you know so exactly yeah, yeah. people are so into into it you know that i think that's mm -hmm. that's really fun but yeah it, it and there's even something yeah in frost there's a karmic connection mm -hmm. um, because there's like some sort of like major log jam and a fire on that river or whatever, which the shoe washes up on like a hundred <laughs> years earlier to the date, February 20th, right. you know? Yeah. And so yeah. And then nobody's going to know that if they haven't read Frost's work. So if you're that, if you're that far, you're that deep in, you're starting to develop dogmas about the, about Twin Peaks, like, like as a religion, you know? Right. And, and, and that was funny to <laughs> me, uh, especially as, you know, somebody that, you know, born on February 23rd, it wasn't, to say that, you know, I wanted Twin Peaks Day to be my day or whatever. I just thought yeah. it was so funny growing up. The people that I knew that were the 24th, like I always had issues with. <laughs> like, oh, you know, really? I had friends that were it's born that day. day you this know? weird. Yeah. Cur I was like, yeah, of course she died on that day. You know? Yeah. Of course yeah. they're stuck in this purgatory. You're welcome. <laughs> Have that. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Those uh, are those yeah those opposite those uh, but like just that argument movies. of like no well she died then it's like when do you think life ends like what are we talking about here you <laughs> well, know maybe it just, she didn't even die you know yeah um, yeah exactly and like it became this argument in the r and r cafe not an argument it was a spirit that's pretty kind of great discussion man. but it became this discussion about like yeah like what do we value life like what is the last day of life do you think the act of death itself is the end of life you know it, was, it just bridged all of these like amazing discussions and you had the full pantheon of folks that really love twin peaks as far as like uh, a pop culture thing and they like it for that and that's mm -hmm. beautiful and that's awesome you have folks that you know dig deep into the lore and the mythos whatever you have, uh, you know, absolutists about it. You have, you know, kind of egregorous about it. And it's just like, it's bred this beautiful, you know, prism of uh, weirdos and witches for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and what you're talking and yeah, to go back to like the Ophidian current and what Grant was, what I was reading from Grant today is he was, um, he was saying, you know, thinking of it in a double current way, like going up and down, um, he associates it with Zane, Zane or Zane and mm -hmm. the lover's card, you know? Yeah. And yeah. There's this ACDC. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's funny because I heard ACDC like three times today. Oh, uh, yeah. I've seen more of like, uh, for like a Jacob's up. Ladder or Tesla coil. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a, um, yeah, an electricity arc, you know, like one time me and Leah had this, we did this uh, working with LPA where we both, we turned on the, the same radio at the same time on a, on our, my PA and we both listened and recorded what we heard. And it was some, there were some points of intersection, but it was mostly different. But one thing that we both got was electricity arc, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, and then it, it I didn't even realize at first that that was called a Jacob's ladder, you know, but mm-hmm. it was like, yeah, the, it, but all these, you know, again, going back to these the esoteric, Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, and, and the Ark of the Covenant, which yeah. is definitely <laughs> yeah, you're definitely uh that's part of that clip that we just played is it looks mm-hmm. very much like they've got the ring sitting on top of the Ark of the Covenant and you're referring back to even like, you know, like King Solomon and he has a, you know, in, in the, the Solomonic, um, the Testament of Solomon um, about the Solomon. It's like one of the earliest Solomonic grimoires, I guess. Um, you know, you have to have this, this special ring. Um, right. Otherwise you're melted or. Yeah. Like yeah something yeah. acidic about. Yeah. So, you know, as, as, the demon yeah. Asmodeus steals the ring from, from Solomon and transports, uh, transport Solomon to some other world, some other realm. And uh, that somebody has to step in and get rid of Asmodeus and do the work to bring him back, you know? Um, so yeah, there's a, there's, yeah, there's all kinds of esoteric stuff. And, and the, the deal with Asmodeus, we learned the other day, I was looking around, I was studying Asmodeus because I've been looking into like the Mary Magdalene and, and Sonia and, and Rans Le Chateau and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, there's Asmodeus is, is at the door of Sonia's church. And, um, you know, I, I made all the obvious connections there esoterically with the Solomonic grimoires and whatnot. But then I was looking around and somebody, I don't know who, and thank you to whoever figured this out. There's actually a, a scene where there's uh, the, the uh, sigil of Asmo, Asmode is hanging up behind Cooper when they're doing... Uh, they're studying the symbols that are on, uh, on the owl cave petroglyph. Yeah, and that was Groucho for sure. Yeah, I remember that. That's where they're right. I don't think did Groucho write that Reddit. I don't think Groucho. Oh did. no, no, no! I'm saying uh, Groucho found the Reddit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah I don't yeah. know if he, yeah he could have. Yeah. He's good like that. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know who it was, but uh, but yeah. thank you to them because that really yeah that really put some right connected some dots you know. Um, so yeah, yeah, there, that's I mean, hilarious. All that, yeah. that stuff is is rough shot through through Twin Peaks. You know, it's it is there. The esoteric side is there, um, and that's what I mean. It's like yeah, it's uh, yeah. Once you spelunk into into these, you know, like kind of meanderings, it's pretty, it's pretty revealing just how um, how much of like a uh, uh, you know a bird shot it is. Mm. about like this just a spray of pellets of information that you can take from like the single shell and i i I do feel that you know mark fraud i mean i'm sure lynch is too but like i i just i i can't get over the polarities of them and just how they interpret and chasm it and it's a perfect like uh jacob's ladder if they're down here right it's a perfect jacob's ladder to the spectrum of electricity between the people that are, you know, resolving what the hell they're that spark that they're putting up. Yeah, absolutely. Know. Yeah. Between the go, pillars. Yeah. Yeah. You can go as high or low as you want. Yeah. And, you, know, you can and yeah, that's that's what's beautiful. Is like there's every, on every level, it's like there's a different experience. It's like the Kabbalah, you know what I mean? Like yeah. every level it's the same, you know, you you're experiencing whatever is manifesting in a different form, you know. I gotta and, tell you, you know. These revelations are not fun. Not always. <laughs> I mean, sometimes they are. We're having no, fun. No, I'm tonight, just joking. You know? yeah. yeah, but I, I was mean, like, I can't yeah. do anything with it. I'm not going to bet on black now that I know that everything's gray. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're right. No, but, You're right. Uh, True. I, I can't, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But no, uh, no. no, but like there really is. It just it keeps going. Um, I was talking to uh, Mary the other day. 
and I was like, I finally realized like the dramas of the human experience, like these somatic things, like the alchemical process of birth, you know, rebirth and decay, like all of the dramas and machinations, they like, it never ends within that spectrum. It never ends within that spectrum because all we can feel is that spectrum. And it feels like that's the thing with twin peaks. It's like the dramas birth, you know, rebirth and decay birth rebirth and decay kind of a thing or birth death decay whatever you know like it it never ends and it's like these prisms of glasses i think of them like two pane you know sliding glass doors during a monsoon it's like how many can you lock before the chair comes through the fucking glass doors (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. there's there's no closure yeah and there's no I mean, closure there's exactly. no yeah. there's no also no closing yeah. the circle and it's great so, yeah. and that's like um somebody was asking earlier and i think it was uh uh oswald you know brought up the transcendental thing uh with lynch Damn. uh but oswald asks maybe i can find it it's like is transcendental liminal um yeah is the liminal compatible with transcendental? And this is exactly where I would say, you know, and this idea of like, of like the hauntomancy and like the listening post self, all of this is really the process within the liminality that is the transcendence, but it, it is a back room to something like, but the process in, in and of itself this liminal right to death that is life, this liminal right to getting wherever is not having the destination. Right. So yes, like the liminal is transcendental or it can be, you know, I I think it's funny in popular culture that it's used as a sort of nightmare fuel, you know, the the back rooms, the the liminal, the liminal. Yeah. And it's like, it can be that too, you know, there's, yeah, I don't think they're opposed, you know. Yeah. I think um I think we experience the liminal as transcendental often, you know, and in yeah. transcendental meditation or meditation uh whatsoever, you're you get a feeling of both. And I think what what's going on is you're getting closer to what your brain does when you die, maybe, you know. Um, and so yeah. you know, it's a it's a preparation for the ultimate transcendence of our consciousness now, which is which is the death the unknown you know yeah it's a it's a it's the souls uh fall from the the jungle gym you know where the dad (laughs) comes over and goes you're fucked we're gonna have to figure something out but it's gonna be all right (laughs) yeah it's uh (laughs) not that i ever had that yeah um but oh but we're talking about techniques now and uh, you know there's this uh with the ophidian current there grant constructs this big list of, of different ways to um, enact the Kundalini or to, to awaken the Kundalini and, and a pep. And I'm not going to like read through them all, but um, some that we see one is like total concentration absorption of the mind and its source brought on by intense study or research. Um, and another one that, you know, you see with Laura and, a lot of the younger people in Twin Peaks is uh, drugs and alcohol. Um, also shock, you know, and you see that that happens to Laura a lot. She's, she's getting shocked a lot. You know, um, the most shocking scene we see in uh, Firewalk with me is the scene with, uh, with her and her father and, and killer Bob in bed all together. I guess that's how I'm going to say that. But um you know, then you've got like ecstasy, speed, uh, magically controlled sexual activity is what he says. He also calls that out of all these things, he calls that very dangerous. Um, <laughs> absolute compassion for all created things, aesthetic ecstasy, religious enthusiasm, violence carried to the pitch of frenzy. You see that a lot. And she she's experiences that a lot, like with her um, her relationship with like with Leo and, and those other guys, you know, there's a, it's an S and M sort of base thing. And um, so, you know, what there, these, these things are known to awaken the Kundalini. And um, so, you know, I am kind of working with this framework of awakening though, where it's like you have different types 
Um, you have like a gradual awakening through initiation and being taught how to wake it up. And then you have like the sudden lightning flash awakening, which is kind of what I had with um, like, I'm experiencing the gradual awakening now, you know, and I think a lot of us are in LPA and, um, but it, it came from my sudden lightning flash with the see myself event. And um, then there's what I call the rude awakening, you know, where, you know, you're, you, you have something extremely traumatic happen to you um, that awakens your Kundalini. And then, may, and then, you know, this is like the, the, the um, classic, um, problem with with this kind of these techniques is that people get too wide awake too too much too fast and go crazy mm -hmm. blow all their circuits you know and you kind of see that with and also possession it becomes a problem and things like that you know um so yeah then um right the full know. the full fury of your own momentum yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it gets out of control, you know. Um, the fire burns out of control. It's a very dangerous fire, as the log lady says. And you see this in a few different scenes, you know, in the uh, in the scene with Laura and her father and Killer Bob. You also see it with uh, when Phil Jeffries shows up at the FBI headquarters on the other side of that clip we just played, you know, and he's kind of like limping around and he – um, is confused and screaming stuff that nobody understands. And he's like grabbing a guy and he's like, we live in a dream, you know, and us, mm -hmm. you know, I think I've kind of experienced that too. You know, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people that work in magic or work with psychedelics and stuff like that, they, you know, they might have an experience where they just like wake up there somewhere, you know, and they're just yelling all this stuff at people and nobody really understands. And it's all very cryptic or, you know, whatever. But and at the other end of that scene uh, on the the uh, the part that was cut is where he goes. He's like taken back interdimensionally to some other space and time, like somewhere in Brazil or something, you know, and another guy witnesses what had just happened. And there's kind of like a burn mark on the wall behind Philip Jeffries. And he's just kind of standing there screaming. And the guy on the other side, this like this uh, Spanish dude is like, you know, oh, you made me shit my pants. You know, <laughs> he's so freaked out from what he saw, you know. Well, that's also a sudden awakening, you know. Wait, I think I have it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Missing it's, pieces. Yeah. It's Judy at all. Gordon? I know Cook stand fast. Who do you think that is there? Suffered some bumps in the old noggin, eh, Phil? What the hell did he say, Albert? That special agent Dale Cooper. Where the hell have you been, Jeffrey? I sure as hell want to tell you everything, but, but I ain't got a whole lot to go on. But I will tell you one little bitty thing. Judy is positive about this. Oh, interesting. I thought we were going to leave Judy out of it. Albert, sit down, Jeffries. Listen up, listen carefully. I've been to one of their meetings. It was above a convenience store. Who's meeting? Where have you been? Jeffries, you've been gone damn near two years. It was a dream. We live inside. And it's raining post toasties. Hell, God, baby, damn no! I found some in Seattle at Judy's. Then there they were. And they sat quietly for hours. I followed. Oh, 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 ring, ring. Albert, 
Albert, I'll take that second mineral water. Philip, let's calm down here and get all this interesting story on paper. Hello? 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 Give me some good news. Cooper, the device has gone faulty. Can anybody hear me? Mayday! Mayday! February... 1989. What, am I alone in here? He's gone! What? Bring it on, Karanzon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I was haunted by the number 86 all day, which is like the number for Karanzon in the cipher. What? Um, is it really? That's my year. cipher, yeah. It's a, yeah, which also, uh, Karanzon. Um, Three. 86 also means like kill it, snuff it, you know, throw it in the trash. And it also, yeah. it's also. I probably um, should have been aborted. Uh, the the first uh, Twin Peaks uh, episode, the pilot, was aired uh, 86 years to the day of the reception of the first chapter of Libra Alvel Legion. No fucking way. April? Yes, yes April 8th. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. 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 Exactly 86 years. That's hilarious. Wow. Is that part of the palm and the egg? Uh, no, but the I year. It, right. But um, most of Twin Peaks, uh, most of Firewalk with me happens in 1988, mm -hmm. which is a palm and egg year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the and the writing. 86 doesn't get much. enough love. Yeah, the writing and the well, no. yeah, yeah. Nothing happened in 86 besides. I um, mean, 86 <laughs> is a euphemism for kicked out. Yeah, yeah, you kicked out. Yeah, um, kicked out the womb. Yeah, all that. It's, yeah, it's it doesn't get enough love numerologically for sure. It's it's a big, <laughs> one. and in the cipher it's a big one too. It equals crowns on it. Also equals like tree. That's so funny. Uh, aethers, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that was that was a perfect place to get kicked off because like the last thing we saw was. Uh, Gordon, all the the lights and the devices going haywire, and Gordon Cole screaming. Cooper, all the devices are going haywire. None of the devices are working. He's trying to yeah. make a call out, you know. <laughs> Look, man, I don't the... need Killer Bob in my life right now, all right? <laughs> yeah, that was really something else, you know. Uh, yeah. No, I, I get it, though. Um, no, it was too appropriate. I wish I uh, screenshot it. It yeah. you just had Cole, Agent Cole, just down listening to the desk. Yeah, it was like yeah. one quick shot, and it stopped there. Yeah, well, yeah, pretty, pretty great. Even even we're doing something good. Failure, failure is a key, also. That's a quote mm -hmm. from the morale. <laughs> yeah, we're doing something good. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I could, uh, you the know, break. I don't know. Uh, how do I put this? I could use a lot less of the fit long, you know, shit filled fist of the corporate entity that is <laughs> whatever yeah. CBS or yeah. I don't need that it's like right now, but I'll, yeah. I'll take it. Just put it on, put it yeah. on the pile. Yeah. yeah. We do not retain the copyright to any of these clips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but anyways yeah that's interesting and that that so that's the clip where we didn't get to see the end of it but yeah um he's trans phil jeffries is transported back 
when after the electricity goes haywire, he's uh, transported back to I think Brazil, and uh, yeah, everybody stands there in shock while he screams and is in pain and uh, is kind of all charred and burned up um, from traveling, I guess, through uh, electricity. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so also you know on the other side of that, at the end of that. Um, so like in the original cut of Firewalk with me, they splice the first clip we played of um, what's going on above the convenience store. Philip Jeffries points way up. Uh, what's going on <laughs> in the convenience? Apple, store. Little Apple of Discord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, what is uh, yeah? What what's going on with him? And but then you see at the end of the clip with uh the the entities in the convenience store they're uh entering they're going out of the veil of the lodge and they're entering into twin peaks and you say cuts to laura palmer looking up and she's looking there's another deleted scene and and uh the missing pieces where she's looking up at a fan in the middle of the hallway of, of her house and now that fan is originally where um, uh, Gordon Cole or David Lynch was standing when he got the epiphany for to use uh, uh, Frank Silva for Bob. Yeah. He was standing under that fan. He always mentions it when he talks about it. Like, yeah, yeah. I remember Frank Silva yeah. talking about it, and he's like, "Yeah, you you look like a homicidal maniac." <laughs> <laughs> he's like yeah. thank and, you i think you know yeah, and he really there's there's a i listened to an interview with frank silva recently on, on some, yeah. some podcast r.i.p and he yes absolutely and i mean not a professional actor really but like i mean god i'm a guy yeah. guy like me um, yeah big love to frank silva he was amazing in that in those those shows in that film. I mean, it wouldn't have been Twin Peaks without him, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what's kind of that kind of calls to the process. I mean, it's it's so many layers of meta right there underneath that fan, you know. Uh, that it's it's just insane. It's a cross yeah. point. It's like a transdimensional, you know. And this idea of like you know, people are like uh, you know, like Josie gets stuck in the in the the what is it like a doorknob or something you know people are like that's so stupid but it's like you know that, that you know you have those sort of experiences where things that are very mundane mm. become suddenly enchanted you know and 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 uh like a mile marker of the mm -hmm. creative process or of something even worse you know <laughs> so yeah it's it's it makes sense if you think about it in this sort of uh this this ultra terrestrial super spectrum uh framework you know uh and i guess that that was that's really my point that's uh about all i've got you know uh for tonight um <laughs> you got you got anything else there keith <laughs> <laughs> all that is like and closing argument okay Maybe closing so, argument uh, fans um, are magical <laughs> yeah no no not much and i don't want to keep you much uh, i did love though uh that's brilliant just as somebody that can displace myself and kind of see the absurdity of like all of this and letting go of it. I think there was a time I think there, and there still is that I wrestle with about the minutia of things where I, I can put too much intent on things and, and get very obsessive with intention. And I'm realizing that like part of the charm, I think, or something like in these ruminations about the absolute and the inherent, right? Mm -hmm. The absolute beyond itself, like to its absolute point or the inherent, just like whatever this is or whatever vector this can be. There's such a chaotic principle to it. And yeah, that just like, it, it charmed me that it broke down and shut down. And I just see just in the corner of my eye, like Stasha and Sam, Going, oh, I hope they downloaded that. I guess it's not here anymore. I was like, wait, what happened? <laughs> you know? And it's just, yeah. it's perfect. And yeah. like, the devices yeah, that's the aren't thing. working. Yeah. <laughs> Every, everything, everything is okay. You know? Yeah. It's so funny because it really is. Uh, I think when I get lost in the agnosticism 
just of self, I, I think of myself uh, separate than I think of myself as like a solemn individualistic like ether that is fighting this like orgasmically connected big fist that is <laughs> corporations or you know anything that gets you down in the day and i think that's a human yeah. condition right we always think yeah. like that let alone you know we still put rings on those fingers we still you know we do what we can just to kind of keep ourselves like buoyant and uh surprised and Tonight was yes. very much a fun surprise in that, yeah. and yeah, yeah, we, um, we got, we're getting real th a lot of theory tonight, a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of good stuff, um, but also a uh, a demonstration of how <laughs> this this works. It's not always like you know it, it'll uh, fuck up your plans sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I guess the. But, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, even if we didn't have any recording of this video or what we've done tonight, I mean, it would probably piss me off a little bit, like, in, in mm. some, some degree. But also, yeah. I really enjoyed being here with you. This is all the Listing Post Alpha agents were present for the most, I think, you know, and and uh, everybody got what they what they needed, hopefully, tonight. And, you know, yeah. if, if it all just fades, I mean, eventually, it all just you know it's not going to be here anymore anyways i have a couple of things with that the first one when you say that too is like yeah no i am so happy to sit here in that experience and to be the one like at the control like <laughs> pull myself back in and be like wait what happened <laughs> well tonight you said that gordon cole was your spirit animal you know yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, and he kind of is. He like, I really do feel like he's a vector for myself within listening post alphas specifically. And I feel like, um, you know, my tangential nature with regarding kind of the cut up of, you know, thoughts and like the minutia of life are really lyrics they're really these disjointed you know colloquialisms from my grandfather they're these like mm -hmm. you know these things yeah. that ground me in these weird ways and it, yeah. it he seems to just cycle them and they seem absurd and totally left field at the time and it it's a perfect metaphor for all of this especially with the spirit box stuff because i'll go months and be like oh that was shit i remember you know the Kind of initiatory experience on april 8th of this year with listening to post alpha and i had that really hard one where i like uh i i felt like i was being played with yeah and i go back months later and i break it down and i'm still kind of i i haven't turned it in because i'm it's still revealing itself yeah, you know yeah. and that's and, the thing you know yeah. that's the process yeah it's just yeah it's, yeah. It seems to be never ending. <laughs> yeah, but never ending. But as, yeah, as long as you're willing to listen, it, they'll they'll keep talking to you. You know. Yeah. And, well, uh, and I love that too. Just like you know, I have to say, just this kind of like you know, this pink room, right? This uh, purple room, this mob zone, mm -hmm. like it 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 just all coalesces in such a way that there's not really much to do with it other than express your own opinion or like express your own somatic kind of existence yeah, within yeah. it. And yeah. like, I have been, you know, in a revelatory sort of way for the past few months, like in so much so that I would wake up and my first thoughts are, I need to speak to a pious person, you know, <laughs> like I need right. to speak to somebody of clergy that has a, uh, like, the affordability to, to think of God as much as I do. I remember like looking to Mary and like the idea of God or just like, you know, piety in general. I remember looking to Mary when we were on tour and just like, well, it was one of the most honest things I've ever said. And was like, no one needs to think about God this much. Like no one should. <laughs> and it was like a collective, maybe they should, you know, maybe yeah, they should. It, but it was like a collective buildup of, of my entire life where I was like, I yeah. don't have, you know, I don't have the fountain yeah. to spit that. And, and how like that parlays into any kind of culture you're imbibing in any kind of medium, 
And it always comes down to art and people, you know, kind of producing metaphysically these images or randomizations. And yeah, they, you know, in Lynch's sense, I think he has very dejected from the idea of like full intent. I think he's more yeah, accepting of, you know, and he is of the dreamscape. And I have these visions. What do you think of them? I don't know. I mean, I know, yeah. but I can't tell you what it is. Yeah. So I think yeah. sometimes he knows, sometimes he doesn't, you know, I yeah. think that he's, he's just riding the waves of the ideas, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, sometimes it, it fuses with something that he understands intellectually. Maybe, I mean, it probably comes to him in, in sort of the same way, you know, the LPA stuff works, you know, it's like you're yeah. taking a technique, you're going deep, and you're finding the fish, big fish, little fish, whatever, and you're bringing it back and and you're doing the work with it. You know, it's like he also is a like how we're we kind of are like uh, sort of embarrassed to be like fanboys of anything, you know, or whatever, like not embarrassed. I just I don't I God, I just I I think I'm jealous. Really? <laughs> For I me, it's so. always like yeah. I need to be do doing work on myself. I need to be doing work. Yeah, I, I me too. And, and I think it's, like, I think I'm like, jealous. I wish I could just be like so into something. Yeah, like yeah. that's outside yeah, of yeah. like Twin Peaks know. was the first thing, like as yeah. far as as like a pop cultural thing that really. Right. And I don't think this is a fanboy thing at all. That's what I'm well, saying. Yeah, that's what uh, I'm saying. The disparity. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in a way, I could be, you know, it, it maybe to at some level, but yeah, for me, it wasn't because like I was like, this is cool, but like I, you know, I wasn't like I love Twin Peaks, but I wasn't really paying so much attention to it. And then once yeah. it merged into my metaphysical praxis, mm-hmm. then it was, then it was of the utmost importance because I knew that there was, that I was being guided to study this film as like a sort of a holy text and that I, things were going to be revealed to, to me. me that, I think that's the highest, that's the highest form of art is yeah. one that can be used as a tool, like, you know, uh, this in like just completely disseparate from yourself and the creator you mm-hmm. hear something it's like it's like anything you know it's, it's it's like hauntology is is exactly that it's like trying to go back and like why did this inspire me oh my god this is a time travel device we're getting you know beyond the 5d mm-hmm. i hated saying that it came out of my mouth <laughs> i said 5d and i hated saying that um <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like there's all these like mechanisms, these things that inspire you. And and what I'm realizing is like, those are yours. They're not theirs. And even the creators are not theirs. They're like the way you interact with them is completely your own. And it's, it's really pretty. It's a beautiful thing. And and it really stuff starts to break down when you try to for you know what I mean when you try to force everybody else to look at things the way you look <laughs> at it and all that you know what I mean so and yeah, yeah it's that's it's a this it's like a core problem you know um, yeah this yeah but the I do look at things I'm gonna be real with you I do I think it is if I'm gonna be completely honest I think it's jealousy I think I have <laughs> jealousy for those that are just like happy to have just kind of a resolute answer you know that are Mm. good with like the the drama like one aspect of say twin peaks Mm. one aspect of whatever they're looking at like i'm jealous of that and it comes we're circling back to that idea of the fool card Mm. you know with dougie right and cooper it's like i'm jealous of that i want dougie yeah like there's a part of me that wants that really bad but too far gone now yeah, too coopered yeah. in yeah you know? too much coffee too much cherry <laughs> pie <laughs> right yeah i mean i don't know i yeah sometimes it's uh yeah like you were saying i, I wouldn't say that it's not fun cuz it is fun in a way sometimes doing it, this work and this esoteric research but it's also, it is fun yeah i make it sound so i mean like, it, it, it is hard. but it, it is too yeah, you know yeah. it can be torturous it can you know like the other day and i, I am like, conflating I there's like, a, i was like damn man yeah. you know some days i'm just like i i wish i could just like i can't stop you know like yeah. i'm all the time you know i have to 
tear myself away from my my work, you know, and it's not even like it doesn't make me money, really. I mean, you know what I mean? It doesn't, you know, I'm not going to make a living off of this research. I'm not, you know what I mean? It's not all the like sort of worldly things that, you know, people kind of grasp at when they do these kinds of things or undertake initiation and stuff. It's like uh, all those things have been sloughed off of me, you know, like I, yeah. and I still can't stop doing the work, you know? And yeah, that, that thing about nobody should think about God this much and this uh, need to talk to somebody, you know, making <laughs> more, those words from somebody else. You know? like, but it's, it's I've been like, there, man. You know, that's yeah, why yeah. I went, that's why I did four years of religious studies in, in yeah. university is because, you know, I, I started having, thinking about these things. <laughs> no I, one, you know, yeah. No you know, should, like, and, and it's such a blue collar yeah. thing too. Cause it's like, it gets invasive. It's like, it, Sometimes it gets in the way. It fucking gets in the way. Excuse my French. Don't end me, YouTube. Yeah. Um, <laughs> again. Well, yeah. 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 But like it, it does. It's like it gets in the way. And I'm very like uh I'm I'm communing with that. And I, I do enjoy it. And I like dancing with it. Like there's a that serpentine aspect that we were talking about, about the, you know, the chaotic you know, Kundalini-esque kind of explosion and the tower card and all of that. Like, well, that's the formula, you know, that becomes LCA. addictive. Yeah. Cause you yeah, see the formula and you're like, yeah. I don't like how this is going, oh, you know, yeah. kind yeah. of a thing. But there is a part of me, you know, I used to think it was, uh, I was so drunk on presence. It was always about how I felt all the time. Still is. Let's right. be real how I, how do i feel right now i just can't get out of my head about how mm. i feel i'm like oh it's about this it's about blah 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 but all of that was just a conduit that could be like scrumped down into this like little edible thing that could be something that's just oh uh, a vector outside of yourself an art or you know a piece of music or anything just to kind of exorcise you know with an o yeah. Like exercise that little by little, little deaths. Mm. Yeah, and that was the thing I wanted to talk about with like David Lynch. I know you got to go. I'm not no. going to keep you too long, <laughs> but like little deaths are so big with David Lynch and this. Like, um, I always pick up with smoking. You know, to me, smoking oh, yeah. uh, with David Lynch too was this kind of like this mortal, uh, transitory state of going. I know this isn't the end. I'm not afraid of the end little deaths every day, you know, yeah. it's, it's this kind of like, uh, yeah. it's this like baton death March you play to yourself every day to get you ready for the parade. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like there's, li yeah. yeah, I feel like uh, most of my days, there's not much that's about me or how I feel anymore. You know, I've created this yes. world for myself yeah. where it's like where I have, I have four children, right? You, know, you have so four I, children. I, I yeah. Care yeah. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm having a relationship with Leah, which mm -hmm. intersects with who's an incredible spirit. artist. Yes, in and their own the right. Arts, like, all, all the yeah. stuff behind me is Leah's, and you know we've we've created this immersive, this total environment together. Mm -hmm. You know, in our home, um, and also up, you know, down here is the Chthonic realm, and up there is where you know we raise our children. And you know, it's like I have to give all. I give my all to all these things and there are ego gratifications to every, every bit of it. But at the end of the day, most of it is not about me, you know? Yeah. And, the more, and anytime that I'm like, try to make stuff more about me and how I feel, that's usually when I'm, I fall flat on my face yeah. <laughs> you know, or whatever, you know? And um, so it, yeah, you, and, and you're constantly like with this esoteric research and this work, you know, you, you're, you're, you're going to feel, yeah, there's times where I, you can, you can hear it coming through, like on the recording, I've been recording the, the workings a lot. And there, there was a time for a minute, you know, back in the summer where I was getting really frustrated. I was feeling like I'm being, being toyed with, you know, and um, then yeah. This, inf yeah. this new influx came through, you know, and, and, and I kind of came over, uh, overcame that um, through by getting very direct messages and, and coming to understand what was going on metaphysically a little better. But you, yeah, you know, and, and it's not, it's not um, because like, I won't, it's like, it's not for me that I was frustrated. It's, frust it's frustrating because I feel like this is, you know, I've been told 
to yeah. keep this journal and to 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 the spread this image of the causality yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this is very, or this is so important, you know. And and I don't want to look like a like I'm a total skits, you know. I want I want people to understand that this there's something to this, and that you know you don't have to be afraid to inhabit this space mm-hmm. necessarily, you know. That that this this is maybe a gateway to new uh expressions of religion new expressions of 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 uh, spirituality and spiritism Mm -hmm. that um, and it makes you so more mediated to hear those echoes it's like yeah just deep measured kind of response with it where you kind of you get to celebrate it in those little deaths with it these thoughts yeah. Where like every thought can be a baton death march or like, uh, you know, and this multiversal idea of yourself, like all these cause out, what if I could? It's like, oh, that's fun. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, and even just doing yeah. the work is like a little yeah. death, you know, it's like you always, I always look for a way out, you know, all the yeah. time. I'm always too tired. I'm always looking too to change. Things. Yeah. You know, there's always some, something barking at me that, you know, whether it's a real responsibility or just some, just like, oh, I'm tired. I worked all these hours. I did all these things. Mm-hmm. I deserve a cookie and a nap, you know. And <laughs> maybe that's and the cookie, me. little yeah. death. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. But what's what you know? What? Uh, how can we give the gift of death? You know, yeah. Frida says, rather than just taking it all uh, for ourselves in like a sort of masturbatory jouissance or whatever exactly yeah <laughs> walk on yeah sorry i didn't see everybody hello thank you everyone sam shadow yeah smoking <laughs> lady asphyxia is very cute but clingy ah i like that very clingy uh yeah good to see everybody thanks for all you hanging out and staying with us for electric boogaloo 2 super spectrum <laughs> yeah i hope Huge. everybody got something out of this i hope this yeah is- yeah yeah but I will put it together. Uh, big love, everyone. And, you know, haunt on. Mm-hmm.